So assume here a car is going uphill. Uh, the initial velocity of the car, so it's uh, assumed that it is, I'm going to give this problem in a uh, British unit system. So you have, uh, let's say it's a 20 degree angle. It's a 3,000 pound car. The initial velocity is equal to, and let's put this at uh, uh, 10 feet per second. And let's say the car can go up and the final velocity of the car can be um, something, let's say, let's say like 50 feet per second. And uh, give the distance there. So let's say the car is going up a hill, a 20 degree incline. The car is 3,000 pounds, the initial velocity 10, and final velocity is 50. And the angle is equal to uh, no, the angle I already gave, the distance I would have to give, let's say something like uh, 1,000 feet. And, uh, and let's say the car is also fighting friction. So there's friction in the road. I'm going to do, uh, in reality here, we would have to know the coefficient of rolling friction but as I'm going to assume that the rolling friction is more or less negligible, but assume that there is kinetic friction on the car. Mu k n. In, in reality, the kinetic friction comes from not necessarily the road, but also other conditions of the car that cause friction, uh, such as its bearings and stuff. So this one, uh, Assume, treat the, for the purposes of this problem, treat the car as almost as if it's a block sliding along an incline and treat the mu k as caused by the surface between the, um, the ground and the car. Although for the car, in reality, it's a little bit more complicated than just a, a block and stuff, but treat it as, as a block. So assume that it's fighting friction uh, mu k 0.3 and it's probably also fighting other sources of friction. Uh, in reality, it's going to fight the air friction as well, right? So, um, and also I'm going to give you the time here. Uh, I could either give you the time or have you solve for the time. Uh, let me give you, uh, let me tell you what I mean by that. If I, if I don't give you the time, I say find A. Uh, find the uh, T if mu k is the only source of friction okay in other words if the mu k the coefficient of kinetic friction is the only source of friction and on, on, the on, no other external forces on it um, Oh, and then there's going to be the force of the engine that uh, pushes it up, uh, the force of the engine, which is unknown. Act, um, actually, for this problem, if I want you to solve for the force of the engine, um, let's see here. You know what? Let me, instead of doing this, let me actually give you the T. The time here is, uh, let's say, eight seconds. Yeah, so let me actually give you the time, eight seconds. Because if I ask you what the T was, I would have to give you what the force of the engine is. But if I give you the time, then I can ask you to solve for the force of the engine and stuff like that. So. Part A, I can say, what is the acceleration of the car and force of engine? Part B, what is the work done by the engine? And then C, what is 
the power uh, of the car in horsepower. Okay, now, if I wanted to find the, let me show you now two approaches so that you can see how I can approach this from Newton's law perspective and versus how I can approach this from the work and energy perspective. If I wanted to do it the Newton's law, I would set up like a free body diagram. F and I would say um, N, then I, I have here uh, mg sine of theta, right? Uh, I mean mg cos theta. And then here I have mg sine theta. And if there's no other uh, forces of friction, then I can say here it accelerates forward at a certain acceleration, right? And then I can say, okay, uh, so then F minus mg sine of theta is equal to O. And then there's friction force that it's fighting. So I need to put here mu kn. So it's fighting, the force of the engine is fighting the downward component of its weight, and it's also fighting the downward component of friction, right, of mu kn. So F minus mg sine theta, force of engine, minus mu kn equals ma. Now in this problem, the force of the engine is not given, but we can solve for the force of the engine because we've, uh, I've given you enough info to find the acceleration, so we can uh, use kinematics to find the acceleration, right? Uh, using kinematics, uh, what would the, let's see, what would the acceleration be here? Well, I know the distance that it's going is 1,000, and I know it's uh, 50 feet per second. And I know the initial velocity is 10. I can use the third equation of kinematics, right? And I can say v final squared is v initial squared plus 2ad. v final squared, uh, well, this one is given to you, 50. The v initial is given to you is 10. And the distance is given to you, the distance along the incline is 1,000 feet. And that's enough info to now solve for the acceleration. One point two It's pretty slow actually, it's not a big acceleration. One point two feet per second squared. Or I could use the V final equals V initial plus A T since I've already given you the T uh, and I've given you that one would be maybe even easier, right? Uh, 50, uh, 10, plus A, 8.